What's up, guys? Steve here with Scotch and Things. Hey, quick video. Oh, maybe kind of a ramble. Um, Rick brought up a good question yesterday. Um, and I think I kind of want to address it or talk about it. Uh, I've done a Holy Trinity video before. The Holy Trinity, if you guys don't know, Chris Reeve, Strider, Hinderer. Um, I don't know when or why they were deemed the Holy Trinity. My guess without looking into it is because they were kind of like the OGs, um, in the pocket knife world. I mean, when you think about USA made, I mean, there was, but I mean, there's others, but oh, my stickers coming off. Let's just say back in the day or these guys kind of help start it or help kick it off. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, uh, for high quality pocket knives. And he asked me if I still think they're deserving to be considered or be in the big three. Hands down, 100% yes. And these are just, guys, I'm no expert. Uh, I'm just a, a knife fan like you guys. But like knife, like with any fans, it could be sports, it could be knives, it could be vehicles, it could be movies. We're all going to have stuff we like and stuff we don't like. Um, you know, I prefer like a hard use knife. Um, one, because I have had each one of these on the job site. So that doesn't mean to say I don't like other other types of knives fidgety knives drop shut action um that's just to say that for what i use these knives for other than edc is i think what they were meant to do um that doesn't make me right doesn't make me wrong but i still think they should be because there's always talk like oh they don't innovate they don't do this they don't do that they shouldn't be in the big three anymore absolutely what I think people need to look at is if you're saying that, why are you saying that? Is it because you don't like the design or the steel they use or the the action on them? That's fine, but that's just your opinion. They, and what do you use a knife for? So I just, I've seen a lot of it and it's just kind of like, call me a fanboy, call me whatever, but... I'm also a fan of other, lots of other knives. Like, I mean, my favorite knife, guys, is the Grimzo Norseman. Would I consider this a hard-use knife? I would consider it a heavy-use knife. Like, knowing what, like, if you go back and watch the videos, um, you know, they gave one to their brother-in-law. I think he's a paleontologist or something, and he literally digs up dinosaur bones with them. You know, carves in stone with them, and it, but... For me, I've noticed, like, for work, outdoor work, hard-use work, I prefer a knife on washers. Because um, just EDCing this, just, just being in my pocket and doing everyday tasks with it, cutting packages, whatnot, the bearings, my bearing knives, like, from EDC and pocket, they just get gummed up. And you will tell, like, the action just starts to slow down. Um, and that's just my... You know what I found. You know, Hinderer has the triway pivot system. You know, they come on bearings now, but you can switch them over to washers. And this XM24 is on. I switched it over to phosphor bronze, and this thing is stupid smooth. You know, bearings. This thing's been upgraded to skiffs, and it's. You know, I would consider the skinny XM more of a EDC type knife. You know. Chris Reeve, running on Phosphor Bronze. Strider, running on Phosphor Bronze. This is my work Strider. You can hear it's, it's dirty as I'll get out. Um, but the action's still great. Um, it's been carried every day at work since last July. And now I'm just going to, you know, now I just carried this for three weeks. And now I'm going to start carrying... Medford. Um, but here's the thing, like, 
So I still think these three are deserving of their place. I just think you have to look at what you use a knife for. Does that mean there's not room for more? Absolutely not. You know, Medford's now absolutely a hard use beast of a knife on washers super smooth um you know things like the sawtooth things like uh i've loaned it out right now but things like the spartan harsey folder um that's just because these are considered more these three are considered more hard use you know this and that doesn't mean there's and because they haven't really changed this has relatively stayed the same. This has stayed the same. Stayed the same minor tweaks by adding the triway pivot system. Um, people like to say they're not innovative. They they don't, you know, you know, still using S35 and S45. He uses, Strider uses a plethora. You know, he's pretty much got a three or four steels that he uses. Um, everybody wants the new whiz-bang cool stuff. But it just works, guys. And if you use them, and if you really use them for what they're intended for, you'll see. Like S35, S45, it doesn't matter. You know, this is CPM 154. Yeah, CPM 154. 3V, 3V, uh, 20CV. Um, just go out and use it. But I get what people are saying. This might not be your cup of tea, this slow rollout, this hard-use tactical folder, but on a job site, guys, it's awesome. You don't want, I wouldn't want to carry, like I said, this, and for how much dirt and dust I see, it just wouldn't make sense. But, guys, I also appreciate stuff like this. I mean, it's a fidgety. This is the Oz, you know, the Oz Roosevelt. Oz Machine Company Roosevelt, one of the best knives out there, guys. Honestly, for an EDC knife, I mean, would I take this to work? Nah, would it probably do okay? Yeah, but like I said, it's on bearings. It's going to get gummed up, not super thick. You know, I'm not going to do any prying with this. Steve, you shouldn't pry with your knife. Guess what, guys? If you're in a job site or something, you're going to pry. You're going to want to pry a little bit with your knife. Uh, I'll talk about it with the XM24 video coming up. Um, you know, Rockstead. This thing is stupid smooth, and I think this is just as hard use as, you know, the Sebenza. Um, it's just a fancier version of it. Uh, Koenig, guys, I had this couple days falling in love with it. This is a fantastic knife, but it's geared more towards EDC. Um, I would not take this to the job site again uh bearings not that it wouldn't cut cardboard and do stuff like that but you know this has got just this fantastic thin hollow grind and that tip just isn't going to survive in some applications compared to something you know just this thick tip here can, where you need something that's just a beast look at I mean super thick there um you know the rask just pfft, EDC knife look at that super slicey super fun and fidgety um so it's that's the nice thing about knives there is something for everybody and you don't like slow rollout you like to be able to middle finger flick I love guys don't get me wrong I love the middle finger flick um, it's like, I love, I can do it on this hinderer. Ooh, maybe if I can get my, see, you know, I love that. I'd rather use that than the flipper. Um, but like I said, I'm not going to take those to work. So it depends what, what your application for the knife is. Don't bash on these three because you're not in a construction environment where you need something super heavy duty um your day-to-day -day office job this is perfectly fine this is perfectly fine um so i don't know guys that's just still in the top three but can others be added 
oh, hell yeah. You know, there's room for everybody. That's the great thing about knives. There's something for everybody. Um, you don't have to have this heavy, hard-duty knife. You know, you can carry something super slim and awesome like this. But like I said, I'm not going to pry with that. I'm not going to pry with most spider codes because I've seen a lot of broken tips. People post up in the group, oh, it's just a super thin blade stock at the tip. I mean, the spider co makes more heavy duty knives. Yeah, but I've seen a lot of broken para three, para two, um, PM two clips or clips tips, but it also depends on the blade steel. You know, don't be prying with your, with your, uh, maximum blade guys. So, and there's also price guys, people bag on these guys for not being innovative and this and that, but I mean, $450 to around $600 will get you into these knives. They use, I mean, these guys just, I mean, upping their price, upping their price. These, these three are more expensive. Now, if you're going to buy a Norseman secondary market, guys, secondary market all day, but don't pay new for no new prices, you know, but stuff like the Arius, the Roosevelt, the Rask, you're looking for 800 to $1,500 guys are getting out of these now. Um, you know, stuff like the, the, uh, what was I just going to say? Oh, the Evo 2.0. Um, a couple months ago when I was looking at those, $700, $800. Now guys are wanting $1,500. For that knife. Um, so a knife is worth what someone's willing to pay for it. And guys are willing to pay $1,500 for this knife. I got lucky and got it at table. Um, I don't know if I would give $1,500. Even though this is such an awesome knife. You just gotta... I don't know. It's depending on personal preference. What are you going to use the knife for? How much do you want to spend? And... All these knives are going to last a very long time if you use them correctly in what they're meant for. EDC, you know, yeah, can you cut a lot of boxes with this? Can you cut a lot of tape? Yeah. Um, is it going to hold up well jamming it in and prying lids off crates? Probably not. Steve, don't pry with your knife. Uh, I'm not carrying a pry bar around with me all the time. And these little mini pry bars, trust me. They're for light duty prying. This, for what, it, it just, whatever. We'll talk about it later. Um, yeah. So there's lots of great makers and lots of great choices out there now. But just because there's stuff like this doesn't mean stuff like this can't exist and can't, doesn't serve a purpose and doesn't mean to be knocked around. So, you know. Those are just my thoughts, guys. Let me know what you think down below. You know, top three, uh, I mean, is it the top 10 now, top five? You just have to look at these high-end makers and look at what the knife's made for. You know, this is a great EDC knife, and it's a great work knife. Um, all these, you know, EDCable, doesn't matter what it is. But then how, you know, could I take this to work with me? Yeah, yeah, I could, especially now that it's coming in Magna Cut, but still, I'm not going to be prying with it. Even though it's a Magna Cut, I'm guessing it's still got that super sweet thin hollow grind and running on bearings compared to washers, you know, thumb studs that lock up against the scales. It's just a sturdier build, in my opinion. But there you go, guys. Almost 15 minutes of rambling. Let me know what you think down below. Um, and just because I didn't mention someone like the M the Demco 8020, I would throw that in there too. Um, just because I didn't mention a maker doesn't... I just kind of wanted to show an example real quick. Holy Trinity and some different stuff that I think is just as good. And there's lots of other makers out there that are just as good. Maybe better. I mean, yeah, there's knives that are better than these. But what, like, these were built for? 
it's hard. It's kind of hard to beat. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.